Hello and welcome to Archi Corner. This is episode number 22 and we will be discussing grows and net square footages. This episode is yet another episode completely selected by viewers like you. Originally, viewer Brett Legendre, I hope I pronounced that right, was the first to request this topic. So thank you Brett for proposing this topic. And then, it was the winning poll selection by the Archi Corner community. So thank you to all of those who submitted their vote and selecting this topic as well. Really quick, before we get started, you have no idea how a simple like helps this channel. If you like it, please don't forget to like the video, or even better, like and subscribe. It really helps. And if you really like it, please share the video with others. Okay, and so on to this video. Let us start by clarifying when you need net and grow square footages. As far as space planning and architecture goes, the IBC touches on the subject only when you are calculating the number of occupants in an area. That's it. To our knowledge, the IBC does not touch the topic of net versus gross square footages in any other topic of the code. If you think otherwise, please leave a comment and let us know. Okay. So now that you know that net and gross square footages are mainly for occupancy calculation, let's get a few basic items out of the way. Item number one is that occupancy loads are based on either square footage or actual occupancy. This does not mean that you get to pick. In fact, most of all occupancies, with a very few exceptions, are based on square footages you need to look at table 1004.5 in the IBC to know. And item number two is, why is occupancy load even needed? There are two main reasons. One is to figure out how many exits you need, and two is to properly size your exits. Having that in mind, let's quickly clarify the obvious. If you don't already know, when the term gross is used, it's used to include everything. Think of a person that is gross, cause you, some people will eat anything and everything. And net means that some items are not included. Think of a fishing net, where most fish you catch stay in the net, but as you pull the net out of the water, sometimes fish escape. A net does not always catch everything, and therefore you do not always get 100%. The same goes with square footages. Gross will always catch everything, and net will not always include everything. Let us look at an example. Look at the floor plan that is being drawn. Let us assume that we are tasked with figuring out the occupancy of the large area. To do this, normally the first thing we do is get the square footage. So by looking at this, we find out that the measurements not including the thickness of the exterior walls are 45 feet by 38 feet. Therefore, the gross square footage is 1,710 gross square feet. Now that we have the square footage, we must figure out what load we need to use to figure out the occupancy. So we look at IBC table 1004.5 to figure it out. If this space was being used for office, we look at the table and find that business areas have a load of one occupant per 150 gross square feet. Which by the way is great because it used to be one per hundred for many many years but that's besides the case. Now IBC allows for one occupant for every 150 gross square feet. Because we have not subtracted anything from this square footage, 1710 square feet is in fact our gross square feet. And therefore our occupant load would be 1,710 divided by 150. That equals 11.4. But as we learned in our past videos, when it relates to occupancies, we always round up. So we have 12 occupants. However, you probably noticed that this resembles a courtroom. And that would mean that using the one occupant per 150 square foot load is incorrect. In the table, we noticed that there is a section for courtrooms and that section of the table calls out for one occupant per 40 net square feet. So what does that mean? How do we get net? The IBC definition in chapter 2 for 
floor area net is the actual occupied area, not including unoccupied accessory areas such as corridors, stairways, ramps, toilet rooms, mechanical rooms, and closets. So, do we have any of those items in this courtroom? Yes, we do. We have two ramps. We also have an area that could be considered a hallway or corridor along with some stairs. We also have a small AV closet. All these areas add up to 89 square feet. So right off the back, we can subtract 89 square feet from the total. Once we subtract that from gross, we get a net square footage of 1,621 net square feet. However, there is more that we can subtract. To understand what other items we may be able to subtract, we need to understand what gross area means. Floor area gross is defined in chapter 2 of the IBC. We are not going to read it all, we will only read enough to get the general idea. But you should read the entire definition to make sure you capture everything. The definition starts by saying, the floor area within the inside perimeter of the exterior walls of the building under consideration. Which by the way, this does not change for net. Net also does not include exterior walls. Anyway, the definition continues saying, exclusive of vent shafts and courts. This means that if this area had a vent shaft or a court, we would be able to subtract it from the gross area and by default also from the net area. But we don't have any of those, so we will leave that alone. The definition continues, without deduction for corridors, stairways, ramps, closets, the thickness of interior walls, columns, or other features. Now this is where it gets interesting, because it says that we cannot subtract the thickness of walls. But as you can see in the net definition, there is no mention of this there. So guess what? Because IVC excluded this wording from the definition of net, we get to subtract all the interior wall thicknesses as well. In our plan, the light gray walls are all interior walls of the courtroom and we can subtract those too. The wall thickness for all the gray walls in this area add up to 55 square feet. Therefore, we have a net square footage of 1,566. All that is left to do now is divide that by 40 and we get, coincidentally, 40 occupants. And that is it. You now understand this concept. It is not as confusing as some people make it seem. As you may have already realized, the square footage is not reduced by a whole lot. We are shaving off some square footage, but it's not as if the deduction could reduce the square footage drastically. So the question may come up as to why even bother doing net versus gross. If you look at table 1004.5, you will notice a pattern. Most areas that allow for a reduction in square footage by using net instead of gross are areas that have high occupancy loads. For example, listed in the table you will find assembly areas, courtrooms, daycares, classrooms, and reading rooms. The occupancy for all these areas are based on high occupancy load factors. For example, some assembly areas may be required to use a load of one occupant per every seven square feet. So being able to reduce your square footage even by seven square feet may help in some instances. As you will find out in your career as a designer and or architect, that rarely becomes an issue. But when it does, boy oh boy are you glad you can use net sometimes I tell you. It really does make a difference sometimes. And well that is it guys and gals, hopefully. This cleared up the mystery surrounding net and gross square footages. If you like this video, please share it with others. Subscribe and leave a comment and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If there are other subjects that you would like to see in this channel, leave it in the comments. Perhaps it'll be one of the future videos. Here are a couple of videos that you may like. Click on them and keep learning. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.